my name's Carla, and this is my son, Emmanuel. Hello. Um, I grew up in Renshaw, Minnesota. It's a very small place. I had, I mean, I've lived a lot of places, and I was, you know, I grew up with crazy parents that lived off the grid, so I had a different existence than a lot of my other friends and such, but, and I, I really appreciate the fact that I got to travel and see so many things. Um, and I, it just affected me and I always love to travel. I'm glad we came back here for the most part, um, <laughs> for the most part. And I don't know, I'm not, I, as Drew knows, I'm not good at talking about my art and or myself. <laughs> it's not one of my strong points. So that's why I like making art because it speaks for me and I don't have to use my words. And I, that's why I like art. Uh, uh, do you have another question? <laughs> I think that's a great, great segue <laughs> into, yeah, let's talk about your art. So one thing I think is so interesting from what I've observed is all the different mediums you use. Um, and I don't know kind of how you feel that connects with, maybe it is, maybe it doesn't, but um, do you kind of work in different mediums when you're trying to get across different sorts of subject matter or um, meaning or just whatever, whatever you want to say about your medium usage. Well, I mean, I grew up in a household where my mother would put paper on the bottoms of the walls so we could draw on them. You know, I grew up in that kind of atmosphere, which is nice. And I always thought when I went to art school, they said, you have to do it this way. And I cannot stand it when people say, this is the way it must be done. <laughs> and I'll say, I don't think so. So I see why well, I just, my question, my answer to that is why wouldn't you use more than one medium? Why wouldn't a person? <laughs> that's me. That's just how I feel. And because that's me, I think maybe always constantly pushing the boundaries. And what's, what's the, you know, with the pandemic and the uprising right now, for me, I love pushing limits. I like making myself and under, other people uncomfortable. And so this is just, you know, my uncle in California, who's been through so much as a, a black man in this country, you know, growing up in the 50s, he said something so interesting to me. He said, Carla, this box cannot be closed. And I'm excited about that. And I'm terrified. And so finding my role in this, my role as an artist and as a mother and as a community member, I think, I, I think I'm really ready to push my art even further and bigger. So I don't understand why people just want to use one medium. That's them. And they do beautiful work. And that's great. But I just don't, I just, I can work that way. And I was forced to work that way when I went to school and I hated it. And um, now I just, I like just looking and seeing and yeah, I like using all kinds of mediums. That's just how I've always, I've wanted, how I've always wanted to work. So what are some of the ones you've been using lately that you really enjoy? Uh, I've been using different um, languages, um, Korean Bibles and Amer um, Lutheran Bibles and different kinds of Bibles um, and searching out scripture because I just think we are living in amazing and terrifying times. And what's going on is, just, I mean, because one of your questions was, what do you have planned? I excuse my language. I don't know what fucking any of us have planned. Who knows what's <laughs> going to happen? We don't know what, you know, I was like, I don't know. I, I like, I just, I keep turning out art. I keep trying to figure out what my role is in this and what your role is in this. And I don't know, just doing my best and helping my community in that that is a rainbow of things. And so my art is a lot of dark. I've been painting tons of black uh, backgrounds and all different kinds of things and materials and just putting color and light and just seeing like, just trying to give a little hope to that. But like a lot of my art, I like to put a some kind of macabre humor in it because I just think I don't know how else to get through this <laughs> you know what I mean I just how do we get through this and so with beauty and pain and humor so. yeah I love that you, just something you're kind of maybe touching on but just how everyone is kind of in the unknown right now mm -hmm. so right. whether it's your way to process that or embrace that um yeah thank you yeah. thank you for mm -hmm. speaking to that uh, maybe we should take a look at, I have a few samples of your artwork for if people would like to check them out and then maybe you can kind of talk about each one a little bit if you'd like. 
So I will pull these up quick. Great. That's a piece called My Fake Neighbors. I think there's between 70 and 75. Um, it just, it's a view of my, um, of how I'm untrusting. I mean, I've been making this kind of art. This is what I do. I make art that makes, you know, just like think about it. Like a lot of my neighbors will say hi to me and I live next to them, but they don't, they don't want to be friendly with me you know, in that kind of way. So I don't know. And I, th this piece really of offended a lot of my neighbors. They said, is this what you think of me? And I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of funny. I was like, I don't know. But it was just like all these fake faces we wear, not just uh, against me, but me against other people as well. You know, let's, we all have these masks on. And I just thought there's so many different kinds of masks and there's so many different kinds of people. And we're all hiding from each other constantly. And so I just wanted to put something visual towards that. And how large is this piece? These are all individual pieces. Oh, okay. And they're probably, I don't know, so big. And they're all on plexiglass and they're- I say all together maybe like eight feet by yeah. eight feet? Eight by eight maybe? Eight feet. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. All right. And this is a piece I did a couple of years ago. Um, Khalif Browder was a young man, young African-American man, and he was falsely arrested. Long story short, he ended up in solitary confinement. And he was in there so long because of economic reasons, because of racism, and so many other things. And he couldn't leave for, he couldn't get bail for such a small amount of money that I thought, my girlfriend said to me, that's a lot of money for somebody, Carla. And I got taught a lesson that day. And he stayed in there for so long and he was so damaged and he was so broken, broken from that, that he ended up committing suicide. And it bothers me because this is one out of a million stories about, you know, our prison systems, um, about, poverty in this country and how clear it is, but how unclear it is to some people and how frustrating it is. And, and it's very important to see this for, you know, this is all about gain and money. So I made this a couple, couple years ago and it came to me very easily because like, this is so obvious what is going on. And this is my tribute to him and all the other young people and people that have gone through the same thing. So I'm curious about, I know you have a lot of, you know, a variety of meanings through your work, whether it's mm -hmm. implicit, explicit. I'm curious if, what, what are the shoes? What, how would you describe kind of, and maybe that's more obvious. Maybe I'm just not, <laughs> I'm just curious, um, your meaning behind the different shoes. I was at an artist talk a couple years ago and somebody asked me that and I got really offend offensive. Because a white person asked me that, and I was like, I don't know, but I'll let my son answer that because he he is so eloquent when he says it. I'm sorry, um, that's okay, that's okay. Um, well, I at least correct me if I'm wrong, but um, see, we have three different types, we have three different types of shoes. We got the fancy golden kicks at the top, and then you have kind of the a little bit more raggedy shoes at the middle, and then just the almost like doll shoes at the bottom. And you're, I guess you're just in life, you're just, or the way things work right now, you're born with one pair of shoes and those are the shoes you wear for the rest of your life. And um, depending on which shoes you have, you're, you're doing better in life or you're going to do worse. And I think that's, at least that's what I take away from mm -hmm. it. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Well, thank you for expounding. Yes. Um, okay, so we have one more, if you don't mind, and I apologize if this isn't quite as clear of an image, um, just okay. the way we captured it, but. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is one of my favorite pieces. One of my great role models and my mentors is James Baldwin, and him and Toni Morrison and Maya and all my, I call them my aunties and uncles, they've been saying all this for so long, and I'm actually fascinated with James Baldwin because it's, it's so it's just a full cir circle at this moment, what he said and what's happening now and so on and so forth. But this, um, his documentary was, the documentary he was in was coming out when I made this and it was called, I'm not your Negro. And then I thought, well, my granddaddy used to call people Negro. And I'm like, God, that's really old fashioned. So I said, I'm just going to say it. I'm not your nigger. And so I made this piece 
as a homage to that. You know, it has slave ships on it. It has this, and it's it's to that empowerment of taking that word and saying, you made up that word. You're the person who had to make up the word and make up this, you know, people to say, like, these are these people. It's like, I'm going to own it. So that's my take on that piece. And Carl Crawford had that in his office for two years. And then it's at the Minnesota Fine Art Black Show right now, traveling somewhere. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to come back from your, since we're talking a little bit about your artwork. Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't know if you have any closing thoughts you'd like to share, or, I mean, you've already talked so much about you know, stuff relevant to this year. So, um, but just kind of as our, the visual artist representation, um, you know, you've talked a little about process too, or just kind of the unknown future. Um, yeah, just kind of curious where in closing thoughts about this year, looking forward. And this is a very big question. <laughs> we'll call it open-ended. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Well, I'm in the same boat as a lot of you, but then I'm in a different boat as well. Uh, we're just trying to get by. I'm not really planning anything. I'm just trying to work on a website. I am cranking out so much art right now. It is crazy. And that's what I'm doing. And my process is a little bit different because I'm more, I'm at home more, but I have this peaceful time to think without being rushed. And I'm just part of the uprising and doing what we can to support each other in all different ways and just cranking out an immense, uh, you know, volume of work. And so just, I don't know, and I'm just like a lot of other people, or we are, we're just trying to get through the day, working a job, wearing a mask for 12 hours a day, you know, so, but I'm optimistic, I'm angry, and scared, just like everybody else, but getting through it. <laughs> Awesome. Well, we look forward to see the new stuff you're working on when you're ready. 